Hello, hello, hello. Hola, hola, hola. Welcome to a new episode of the Yoga for All Bodies video podcast. As you can see on your screen, today I have an amazing guest <laughs> for you. Pearl Walker Sweeney is Lakota, Dakota, and Anishinaabe. She's a yoga teacher, creator of constant motion, and her focus is offering meditation and vinyasa flows for indigenous caregivers, parents, families, and educators to find their sacred breath <clears throat> and invite indigenous self-care and love back into their life. Mm -hmm. Hi, Pearl. Hello. How are you today? I am doing well. It's so great to be here. Thank you for being here. I love the work that you're doing, and it's actually something I don't know. I, I really have no information because I'm from Latin America, I'm from Chile. So when I found you, when I discovered your work on Instagram, I was like blown away. It's absolutely something super niche and so needed. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. I appreciate it. And so needed. That's key. Mm, so yes. I would like to start asking you, how did yoga came to your life? Yeah, so I believe when I was pregnant, um, someone had mentioned prenatal yoga classes and I was like, I don't think I have time for that or I don't know about that. And so I just put it off, put it off. And finally, when my son was probably close to um, one or two, it was in between that time, he was one or two years old, I decided um, to get a gym membership that had a yoga studio with it and decided to just give it a try. Like I knew yoga helped you with so many things, um, feeling good, emotional health, physical health. So I thought, okay, I will try this and see if it helps me. And I went to my first yoga class and I think I cried in Shavasana. I just felt so, um, refreshed and grounded and from there I, I knew that I had to practice something that would allow me to release a lot of the emotions a lot of the um sort of the the past traumas I carried that I didn't realize I was still holding on to and so this journey into yoga started with this postpartum period of being a, a, a new mom and finding a practice that allowed me to really uh look within and release a lot of things I I was holding on to that was weighing me down. And those attachments to the, that emotion and, and the grief of different things throughout my life, I realized how yoga let me lift that up. Um, and it gave me a sense of, of groundedness that I was missing. I, I had done other things in my life to feel grounded, such as ceremony and prayer and being in community, but I still felt a part of me was was not fully myself. And this is a practice that brought that back to me. And that's why I lead with love, indigenous love, because it's so compassionate. And there's so many ways that you can practice love or compassion. And that's one of the core values of the work I do, but also how I live my life. And so that's kind of how I got into yoga. And just very briefly, I came across a studio that a great friend of mine, I call her my cosmic twin, April Joe, if you're watching this, a big shout out. Um, we worked together and she invited me to this yoga studio in Minneapolis that's run by uh, the only uh, black woman owned yoga studio in the Twin Cities area. And so I went to a class with her and it was so transformative. I was like, yes, this is a, a yoga studio that I need to join. And that was actually the, the owner was the one I learned yoga from, um, for my yoga teacher training. She hosted a training this past fall and it was so transformative um, to be in community with complete strangers that are now like lifelong friends and how much we've deepened our yoga practice. So um, that's kind of my journey with yoga. Beautiful. Love it. Love it. And, and thank you for mentioning the people that, that impacted your yoga journey. 
Yes, love it. And in what moment did, did you notice that you had the calling to become a yoga teacher? Yes, so definitely when I moved from Fargo, North Dakota to the Twin Cities, it was a big transition. Fargo is kind of a rural city, but it's still a city. And then moving to the Twin Cities is like so different. They're, like, the culture is different. Um, the population size, just like driving from one place to another. Um, there's a lot of differences and we didn't know a lot of people here. And so finding a daycare for our son, it was just like so many new things that was really overwhelming for me. And this was a, a place where I had an opportunity to find a gym that also had yoga classes. So I would go to them and realize like, this is something that I enjoy that I know that helps me as a, as a mother, as a parent, um, deal with stress, the daily stress of being a parent um, and trying to decolonize the way that I parent um, and doing positive affirmations daily. Uh, so this is something I knew um, I wanted to share with others. And when this training came up, you know, across, I was like, yes, I, I, I need to do this. You know, I asked my partner, my husband, I was like, is it okay if I dedicate this this time and this day for this many months to this program. And he was like, go for it. And, you know, fully supportive of a lot of things I do. And I'm also a full spectrum doula. And this was something that I knew I could also offer as part of my doula services for uh, pregnant families that would impact them positively. And so this is kind of, you know, how I knew what my calling was, yes, this is something um, I want to share. Amazing. Oh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. And how did you find your niche, what you're offering right now, that is focused on indigenous families, caregivers, and so much more? Tell us about that journey, please. Yes, I wasn't exactly sure how I would um, market myself or even who my audience would be because I have so many friends in different circles. I was like, I think I'm just going to be a regular yoga teacher. And as I went along through my yoga teacher training, as I started practice teaching, I realized like the way that I speak, the way that I bring my perspective to yoga is fully in an indigenous perspective. And that's something that's not really uh, common in the yoga industry and you know being also a doula um, and knowing how you know busy things can get or overwhelming as a, a parent but also as a student uh, I realized yes these are the people that are reaching out to me but also I have been there and I know exactly what that experience is like so you know offering meditations for grounding them for stress relief, uh, positive affirmations, or just like giving them options for moving um, and feeling good in their bodies can be so uh, empowering. And that's where I realized like, yes, these are my people. Um, they're, they've been in places that I have, but also um, they're sort of like people that are in my circles that I know of. And so this is kind of how I, I decided, yes, these are, these are the people I want to reach. Um, and I think it's going to continue growing um, as, I, as I move through this journey. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. And you mentioned that, that those were the people that were coming to you. And that's super important. Now in the same line, As I mentioned before, I'm still, I'm from Latin America, I'm from Chile, literally a country in the end of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm still figuring out everything about United States and about the world, <laughs> really. Mm. So how would you say, or how would you describe being indigenous in the yoga world? Mm. That's a really good question. Um, so I think, It's unique because a lot of the philosophy and teachings and ceremonial 
um, practices, even just the culture of my people of Lakota, Dakota, Anishinaabe people, um, our worldviews, even our language um, speak so similarly, similarly to the practice of yoga, which is miles and across oceans and across countries. And I just find it so interesting how um, how different we we are in some of our life ways, but they are so very similar. When you go to the core values, when you go to um, the foundation of yoga, the eight limbs, uh, we have a different way of saying the eight limbs. And, and you know, my people, we um, we have teachings, we have. Um, stories. We have a lot of uh, life philosophies and words that describe all of those things that are rooted in the, in, you know, the origins of yoga. And so, you know, coming from an Indigenous perspective, I tie those cultural pieces in to my practice. So like, sometimes you'll hear words from uh, my people that are in the practice, or phrases that we say, like, be a good relative, um, that's kind of like a universal one for Lakota and Dakota country is be a good relative. And, you know, it's like all of those things about being a good human, not just to yourself, but to other living things, not just people. Um, it's the ground, it's the environment, um, plants, you know, uh, we call them four leggeds, um, dogs, cats, horses, um, the winged ones, the ones that fly, uh, all the birds. So, you know, there's, there's these phrases, there's aspects of my culture from my people that I bring to the space. And it's familiar for the people that, that come to me. They're like, I've never been to a yoga class that was like this. Um, and so I think that's why I'm a little different but also um, similar to maybe other yoga teachers who have, who bring that to, to this space. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And that's the beautiful thing that you can really bring who you are to the practice and, and create a space from, from what I'm noticing, create a space that wasn't there before. Mm. Yes. Yes. And, and that it's so, so needed. How, would, how have you felt the reception of other members, for example, um, with the people that you did your training or the reception in social media? What have you noticed? Because this is, I follow a lot of people on Instagram and I haven't seen this. That's why I'm curious. <laughs> yes, um, that's a great question. I, I think I also see the, the difference in the way I approach yoga um, than those that I, I trained with. Uh, but even though we learned the same set of skills, the same um, foundations, you know, we, we all approach it so differently that it makes each of us so unique. And I love to see where everyone that I graduated with is going with their own yoga journey. Um, we're all in different places with that. And I just love to see how, you know, our personalities, our, our passion comes out so differently. Um, I just think that's so amazing that, you know, we did the same things, but the way we express it is, is different. Um, and I've been to their classes before and, and love them. And they've been to my classes before and, and love it. Um, You know, so I think it's so just amazing how um, people can get the same types of training, but uh, still approach the work differently because you have that flexibility or, or room to bring in your personality, to, to put your own twist on things and make it, make it really unique to you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. And... For example, if someone from the indigenous community is watching this video, one, what can they expect from your classes? And Ooh. why is it needed for the indigenous community? Yes. Um, 
I love that question. <laughs> there, there's so much there. I, I think one of the main things is finding your sacred breath. I always share in my meditations. Actually, a lot of my classes start with a meditation, even if it's um, like a hot vinyasa or a slow vinyasa or just a regular ashtanga vinyasa. Like all of my classes start with a, a meditation to connect with your your breath and your sacred breath. And I share why your breath is sacred and reminding um, reminding people that the, the moment you are born earth side and the first time you cry, the first time you breathe, the first time you laugh, these are all sacred moments that are united from your breath. And you yourself are sacred the moment you are born. Um, to the moment you take your last breath, to the, the moment you go back to the stars. There's so much um, philosophy there about um, birth and our life that I think we're so influenced by these systems around us, um, capitalism, colonization, um, all sorts of you know other systems that continue, continue to oppress um, our narratives um, oppress how we see ourselves. And we're really seeing like this uh, revitalization um, across Turtle Island, across the country of reclaiming these practices and, and values that are very indigenous and reflection of our own people, our, our lineages. And it's so beautiful that I I know our, you know, bringing just that, that teaching of your breath is sacred and reuniting people with that um, teaching is so empowering and grounding and, and loving. You're just like, wow, that's right. I'm, I'm sacred and my breath um, is beautiful. My breath is sacred and connecting with it is connecting with my spirit, which allows me to connect to my innermost self. So, you know, it's really nurturing. Uh, I'd say a lot of my classes are, are nurturing and also goofy because um, sometimes I use props that are my son's like stuffed animals. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I think it resonates a lot with some of the people I teach because they're like, oh, I do the same thing because I don't actually have yoga blocks or, or, or props. Um, like, you know, you would, you might have in a yoga studio. So um, we're all practicing from home right now. Um, so yeah, I think you, those are things you can definitely see in my classes. Amazing. Love it. Love it. And I can feel f from you, from the way your words, I, even on a screen, I can feel the love. <laughs> And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And one more time, this is super needed. I created this video podcast to really show that yoga really is for all bodies. That means all cultures, all body types, all beliefs for all. So I'm so happy mm -hmm. to see that it's someone that is doing the work in their niche. Yes, it's so needed. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you. One more time. <laughs> And you mentioned props. Thank you so much. Ooh, no, thank you. Thank you. It, it, <laughs> it's really, for example, and, and I always say this, representation matters and we have still mm. that idea that yoga is for white thin able bodies so every single time mm -hmm. i find someone that is doing the work to say no that's a lie <laughs> yes yes so thank you absolutely and mm. and it, it, in the same <laughs> in the same line what's your opinion in representation in yoga for indigenous people Yes, so I've seen a handful of yoga instructors that are indigenous um, offering classes. There's um, a couple here in Minnesota, I know, and there are a few that are spread across the country. Um, but as far as like the, the you know, seeing, seeing one, I mean, You know, we, we say this a lot in, in Indian country, we, we call it, you know, Indian country is small. So usually if we're in a profession, we know everyone else in that profession. <laughs> um, 
we're just so connected that way. But, you know, I, I definitely think our perspective in the yoga space is, is a needed perspective. Um, and it's, I think, also speaking to yoga, which is unity, it's union. And we have so much in common with those um, people, the, the Desi people, the um, people that this practice originates from. Um, you know, our histories are so similar um, across across places that have been colonized. Um, and so I think that representation is important of having Indigenous yoga instructors um, share the practice and also honoring the roots of, of where it came from. Um, because I think we just have that holistic worldview built into us. So when we approach it, we we put that spin on it and use words and phrases that speak to um, our community members, which, you know, also translates to all communities. So um, I definitely see a, a need for representation and it is growing, but it's not like, you know, exponentially, but it is growing. Yes, it takes time. It takes time, mm -hmm. but yes. And beautiful message. Yes, yes, yes. And now circling back, you mentioned that some, in some of your classes you use as props, toys, <laughs> stuff, animals. Yes. yes. <laughs> so yoga for all bodies, it's all about creating variations and loving props. So I would yes. like to know what is your favorite prop and why? It can also be something from your house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, when I'm not using yoga blocks, um, my favorite prop is a stuffed animal called Baymax. Um, it's a big, uh, fluffy, um, white robot that's on uh, Big Hero 6 that my, my son loves the movie and we bought Baymax um, to match the movie. So that is one of my favorite to use because of the way that it's shaped. Um, it's almost like a, a pillow or rolling up a blanket, but it's just a nice, a nice shape for when I need a little extra support um, under my hips or um, under my knees or even my feet. Oh, love it. I'm going to look it up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And finally, how can people find you? Promote yourself, give all the information, everything. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so they can definitely find me on Instagram. I love Instagram. My handle is at Constant Motion Yoga. And I also have a Facebook page, Constant Motion Yoga. Um, otherwise, they can find my website, which is constantmotion.online. And that's where you can find all of my yoga classes and book with me. Um, you can also send me direct messages there about any questions you have. And those are the main ways to get a hold of me. Amazing. So if you're watching this video, now you know. You have all the information. And trust me, go follow Constant Motion Yoga on Instagram. I love it. Every single day. I, I go in and it's, it, picks, it, it speaks to your heart. So do it, do it, do it, do it. And any other message that you want to share with us and with the viewers of the video podcast? Oh, open um, mic. <laughs> yes, I love it. I would, I would share that yoga is a practice that is more than what you do on your mat. It's in how you live, how you treat yourself, how you treat other people and how you relate to the world around you. And if someone else is telling you it's just what you do on your mat, they might not be telling you the whole picture of yoga. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, love it. Love your message, love your work. Thank you so much for talking with me, for sharing what you're doing with the viewers of this video podcast. Thank you. Mm, thank you so much. Chi miigwech. A big hug to you. We stay in contact. Buy in your houses. And if you're watching this video, like it, share it, subscribe. Because this is a message that everybody needs to know. Yoga is for all bodies. See you. Bye.